Hello all. In this lecture, we will see about structured programming. So we will see what is structured programming, uh, what are the advantages, and also we will see uh, what are the disadvantages of structured programming. So structured programming. So it is a programming approach in which the program is made as a single structure. So it's a programming approach or it's a programming paradigm. It is mainly to improve the clarity or quality and also to improve the development time of computer programs. So earlier we were using this assembly code and all. So we have already seen what is this assembly language and all. So in those days it was not structured. So inside this assembly code there were go to statements. So go to statements, we can jump from one statement to any other statement. So when programming languages came at the initial stage, most of the programs were using that go to statements and all. So what happened is uh, if we go use some languages like uh, Fortran and all, those go to statements used to jump from one statement to some other statement. So there was no structure can uh, transfer from one set, uh, one uh, process into another processing wherever we want it was happening in those days so it was difficult to understand that code understand the code during those days so in structured programming it, it, they try to avoid this go to kind of things and all so it's in this programming approach the program was made as a single structure so the code will execute the instruction by instruction one after the other. There will be some uh, set of uh, oper sequencing operation like that. So one instruction will be executed after that the next instruction like that there will be uh, some order in that code of exec uh, in the execution of that code. And uh, since support the possibility of jumping from one instruction to some other with the help of go to statement like that there are jump instructions were used in this uh, assembly code and all. So it was difficult to understand and make code in that in those languages. So we we'll try to avoid this uh, jumping from instruction to another thing. So it is executed in a serial and structured manner. It is kind of serial kind of operation. So C, C++, Java, C Sharp, almost all programming languages nowadays we use are structured programs, structured programming. So we will see uh, what is the structured program. So it mainly consists of three types of elements. So first one is control structure. Uh, so we have sequence operation, selection operation, iteration and recursion. So we will see this uh, about control structures later. So mainly the structure program consists of three elements. One is control structure, then we have subroutines. That is procedure, functions, methods, subprograms, etc. All these are considered as subroutines. So we will, when we learn the C language, we will learn all this control structure and also we will see about the functions. All these things will be dealt with. Then also the third element in structure program is block. That is uh, begin and end statement in Pascal or the braces in C. Those who are familiar with C and C++, we have this braces and white space indentation, indentation is also considered as uh, block. So we'll I'll show. Okay, I'll show the example later. So uh, these are the three main elements uh, in structured program. One is control structure. So control structure has sequence, selection, iteration, and recursion. So mainly it has sequence, selection, and iteration. Recursion is can be considered as iteration itself. Then we have functions, uh, subroutines. That is functions, procedures, methods. In Java it is called methods. Uh, in Python it, we have methods like that. In different languages we call by different names. In Pascal we call it as procedures like that. So we'll see control structures. So in control structures, we have sequence. So sequence means it is an ordered set of statements executed in sequence. So it is a set of statements that are executed in one after the other. So then we have the second kind of control structure. We call it as selection. Here one or a number of statements is executed depending on the state of the program. That is, we will specify this some condition and based on that condition, if it is true, we will execute one statement. If it is false, we will set, uh, execute another statement. So then it is known as a selections control structure. 
The third type of uh, an example for the selection is if then else loop. So we'll study about in C uh, this if loop and all. Then the third control structure is iteration. So iteration it is a statement or block is executed until the program reaches a statement or operations have been applied to every element of a collection. So it is actually a set of statements that will be executed continuously until a condition becomes false or a condition becomes true. So if you want to execute a set of uh, things uh, uh, repeatedly, then it is known as iteration. Okay, so iteration is a set of, uh, it is a statement or a block of statements that is that will be executed in that part of that program based on some conditions. Uh, while a repeat for all these are examples for this uh, iteration types of statements. So we'll learn about this while loop, for loop and all in C. Then the fourth one is recursion. I have not given that bold letter to show that it can be considered as part of iteration. So recursion, it is a statement uh, that is executed by repeatedly calling itself until termination conditions are met. So we will learn about this recursive function in C later. So considering uh, structural programming, mainly it consists of this control structure that is sequence, selection and iteration. So these three are the important thing in uh, st uh, structured program. So there will be sequence of statements. So it is uh, statements that are executed in one after the other. Then selection kind of statements will be there where we specify some condition. If the condition is true, we will execute this thing. If it is false, we will execute something else. Then iteration, it is something that will be repeated, repeatedly executed. So these are the three things. We When we learn this uh, flow chart and all, we will understand this diagram. We will be learning flowchart in the next uh, lecture. So this is a sequence kind of thing. So sequence is one instruction. Then after this instruction, write this. This is a sequence of operations will be executed in order. Then the second type of control structure, it is selection. So we will have a condition. If it is true, then we will execute this instruction. If it is false, we will execute this instruction. Then there is looping or iteration. Here we make a condition, if it is true, it will be, uh, if it is true or false, we can write in any manner, this set of statements will be executed, uh, this will continue execution. So this will be going on continuing like this until uh, false or some condition occurs, uh, which is violating this choice, it goes out. So this is known as looping or iteration. So this will be repeatedly done. So th when we have these three set of statements, then we call it as a structured program. So when we use all these the kind of statements in our program, we call it as structured programming or structured program. So this is an example for block. I have mentioned about block. So this is an Python program. So this for loop, for uh, loop is a block because we have given provided indentation, some byte spaces. So this means these two statements belong to this block, for block, like that. If you take C, inside this braces, all these statements are considered as a block. So this is a block of code. So we'll be learning about C programming later. Now you just simply understand this block will be there in blocks. Uh, some blocks will be there in programs if whatever in braces is considered as blocks. So this is curly braces. So this is set of curly braces. So whatever inside that curly braces, everything will be considered as a single block of code, single block of code. Okay, uh, just for uh, to show an example, those who already know this Python and C will be able to understand this thing. Those who are not able to understand, just leave it. We don't need this block and all. We just need to understand these three set of statements. That is sequence, selection, iteration. So sequence, it is like this. Selection based on some choice. If it is true, if it is false like this. Uh, looping or iteration will be repeatedly doing this operation until that choice fails. So structured program, it consists of well-structured and separated modules. It consists of well-structured and separated modules. We mainly use single entry and single exit elements. It is well-maintained, neat and clean program. That's why it is known as structured program. 
so here's here there are some advantages for using this structured programming approach so first advantage it is easy to understand it is very easy to read and understand so if we consider the C language and all, it is very easy to understand. But if you consider this assembly code, it is not structured. So it is very difficult. We have jump statements. So one, from one statement, it will jump to some other line. Maybe in the fifth statement, if, if the fifth line there is a jump, we may ask to jump to 25th line. From 25th, we may jump to 47th line. Like that, there will be there won't be any structure. So here there won't be a, any jump statement at all. So it will be easier to read and understand. It is user friendly. It is easier to maintain. So if we want to correct this code, it is very easy to maintain this kind of code. Then mainly problem based instead of being machine based. We won't focus on machine. We will be mainly focusing on problem and based on that we will be uh, designing the code. Then development easier as it requires less effort and time then it is easier to debug if you want to correct the errors it is easy to debug and find out this errors and mostly it is machine independent we cannot say that it is always machine independent most of the code is machine independent that is it does not depend on the machine uh, everyone can write their code on their own pro. same code can be written on different machines then there are disadvantages also for the structured programming one uh, one disadvantage is as it is machine independent it takes time to convert into machine code because we need to convert it into machine code we have already seen we need to convert a high level language to low level language so that the machine understands it so it takes some time to convert it into machine code so that is an, a disadvantage then converted machine code is not the same uh, as for assembly language so if, uh, what we convert in this machine code is different from what we convert an assembly code to machine code. So here it is something called we if it is C we convert it to an object code like that. There will be different kinds of code that will be converted. Then uh, it pro program uh, depends upon changeable factors like data types. So uh, it depends on the program depends on the uh, data types and all. So if we if we want to update we need to update uh, all these things the data types everything need to be updated then usually the development in this approach takes longer uh, as it is language dependent it is dependent on the language so it takes longer time to depend uh, whereas if you consider this assembly language it takes lesser time uh, because we directly fix it into the machine itself so it is easier to develop assembly code I mean uh, in the sense that uh, it takes less uh, time to uh, code it in the machine. Uh, so these are the references that I have used to for the structured programming. Thank you.